Hi, I'm Tiffany from Daisy Farm Crafts, and today I'm going to teach you how to do this really simple beginner striped blanket, as well as this polka dot border that goes around the edge. So today I am using a size H five millimeter hook to go along with Karen Simply Soft, which is a medium, four weight yarn and the recommended hook size is a five millimeter H. So always use this as a guide and then after this practice swatch maybe you'll be able to tell if your tension is too tight or too loose and you'll want to go up or down a hook size. It all depends on your personal tension. So the colors today for this blanket, this is Victorian Rose. I'm going to be using Gray Heather and white. So let's get started. Something else that you might want to have on hand is a stitch marker, two stitch markers, but if you don't have them, sometimes I use safety pins and that works too. This is only if you need help keeping the sides of your blanket straight. Okay, so with any beginner crochet project, I really like to show you how to make a slip knot to start. So I just um, make a loop and then push a little bit of the yarn through and then um, pull down on it. You just want halfway. There's lots of different ways to make a slip knot, but that's basically what it is. Then I pull that a little bit tighter. I like to wrap the yarn around my pinky and then around my forefinger and I like to hold my work with my thumb and my third finger. Then I'll yarn over and I will pull a loop back through. This is, we're making chains. And for today, let's just make uh, 12 chains. I think that'll give us a really good sample to work with, a good swatch. This is number six. Seven, eight, nine, and here is 12. Okay, so the stitch that we're going to be working is called a wide half double crochet. So what that means is that we will yarn over, insert our hook into the third chain from the hook just underneath the top loop then I'll yarn over pull a loop back through and yarn over and pull through all three loops on my hook that's a regular half double crochet the wide part will start on the next row so I want you to work a half double crochet into each stitch across your chain. So I have worked a half double crochet in almost every chain. I'm just to the last one. So I'll insert my hook, yarn over and pull up a loop, and then yarn over, pull through all three loops. Okay, so if you want to count the little V's that you've made, you should have 10. We started with 12 chains, but we skipped two, began in the third chain from the hook, and now we have 10 stitches made. Now I will chain two and turn. And this is where we're going to what's called a wide half double crochet. In regular half double crochet, you can work just underneath these two V's and in this space that's facing you. But in a wide, we're gonna insert our hook all below all of the loops and in between the two stitches there. So insert your hook and then still just continue to work a half double crochet. Now, if you have trouble um, finding what the last stitch of the row is, here's a little tip I wanna give you, is to take your stitch marker or safety pin and go ahead and mark 
this stitch underneath the two V's that you just made, go ahead and mark that with a safety pin so that you know when you come back, this will be the last stitch of your row. So let's try this again. We're going to insert our hook clear down here in between the posts or in between the two stitches underneath all the loops and then work a half double crochet. Well, I'm about to work the last stitch of the row and I didn't mark that on the very first time that we um, that we worked, but how I'll know for sure is that here's the turning two chain and here's the last stitch and the last stitch will always be worked in between those two things. So that splits it apart a little bit. So here's the stitch, here's the turning chain. That's how you'll know where the last stitch is worked of every row. I'm chaining two and then turning and I'm going to work directly underneath this very first stitch of the row. And this time I'll take a pause and I'll go ahead and mark that. And then if it actually, if you want to um, put it around the turning chain, you know, just up underneath there, that would help you to make sure you don't skip that that's the last space to work into. And those safety pins, you'll just move them up the sides um, as you go. This one's marking the last stitch, so I'll take that out. And really with this pattern, you can just always still use the stitch and the turning chain as a guide as well. So safety pins, completely optional. All right, in this pattern, we're doing four rows before we change colors. So why don't you get that last row made and I'll show you how to introduce the new color. Okay, so here's my last stitch and I wanna change and add in the Victorian rows. So I will begin the first step of the half double crochet by yarning over and pulling up a loop and then I'll stop right there. Now here's another thing as a beginner that you might not know is that it's much easier to pull the yarn from the center of the skein versus finding the, the one that wraps around the outside. So sometimes it's a little bit tricky. You have to figure out which one is which um, pulling out, so looks like it's this way, possibly, and this is what's called, oh, the, some people call it the guts, but I like to find both ends before I begin a skein because they can be twisted on it, on itself, so it looks like I found the one for sure that comes out the middle, and this other one is the one that wraps around the outside. So I don't want to use that one. That makes the yarn, uh, the, the skein twist on you and you don't want that. You want to pull from the middle. So here we go. So that's always just my tip. Find both ends and then make sure you're pulling from the one that comes out of the middle. Okay, all you do is you simply Lay the new color across the hook, giving yourself about a 9 to 12 inch tail that you can weave in later. And then you just pull through with the new color. Continue the pattern. Chain two. And see how I kind of was like pulling that down, keep the tension pretty consistent. Now I'm not going to cut the gray color yet. I'm going to teach you how to carry that color up the side of your work. If you're not picky about tiny little bits showing through when you do the border. If you're picky about that, then I'm then you would want to cut your yarn. 
But if you want to save yourself from weaving in a lot of ends and you like this stripey look, then I suggest that you just carry these yarns up the side and they do get covered up by the border. Okay, how about you work three more rows on your own of Victorian rose color. I gotta work this little knot out anyway that popped up here in my yarn. And um, we'll meet you back when we add in the white. Okay, it's time to add in the white. I've already worked just half of the, the stitch. Simply lay that over, give myself a long tail, and pull through. Chain two and turn. Okay, let's get going on the white. So now I've got close to my four rows done. I wanted to show you the last couple stitches to make sure you can see. I've got one stitch here and then the turning chain. Inserting my hook, yarning over, pulling up a loop, stopping right there. Now this is where if you are interested in carrying the yarn up the side of your work, you will reach down, find your gray, bring it up the side, get over your hook and pull through. Now keep in mind that as the blanket grows, you won't have these extra tails getting in your way. It only looks a little bit complicated right here. So find the find the right one, your working tail. Pull it up the side. So when I come back through, though, depending on the color of the border, so say you did choose to do a white border, you're going to see bits of this gray. If that doesn't bother you, then carry this yarn up. If you've if it is going to bug you, then you're going to want to clip that off and you'll just add in the gray. Okay, and then you're on your way. So I'm going to add, I think this will be it. I think I'll just add this gray and then I'll, I'll clip off the yarn and I'll show you how to weave in the ends and then we will get started learning that simple, simple polka dot border. All right, when you complete the blanket and you're at your very last, how you tie it off is that you just pull this loop pretty wide, give yourself, you know, enough of a tail to weave in, like I said, usually about nine or 12 inches, and then you just simply clip it and pull that out. Okay, now I still have some other ends. I like to just give myself, um, you know, like I say, nine to 12 inches to work with for the tail. Okay, so let's take this first tail and I'm using a tapestry needle. We'll weave this, this end in. Now there's really nothing fancy about it other than you just can insert your needle in and outside, in and around and out of each stitch that you would like. I like to usually weave it, depending on the yarn that I'm using, um, some yarn sticks to itself quite a bit so you only have to do maybe two or three passes but and then slippery yarn um, you know I would really probably tie little knots to it like if I was using the velvet you know tie a knot around a stitch that can be disguised but with Karen Simply Soft I just usually go back and forth a couple times and disguise it underneath the stitches like that then when I'm done, kind of pull it back out, get rid of the needle, and just clip it close to the fabric, and then that, that disappears in there. And that's all you do. So you'll want to weave in all of your ends. 
And you'll still have a few, even if you carried yarn out the side. Um, and then let's get started on the border. All right, here is my little swatch. Got all the ends woven in. Here's what it looks like again, just to have the have it carried up the side. And you'll have, you'll see that along your the, the whole side of your blanket if you do that. Really cute. Okay. So what you want to do is start in the corner as if you chained and turned. So I can see that my V's are facing this way. I'll just insert my hook underneath that last corner space or the last stitch of the row that'll be the corner and I'm laying the Victorian rose color over the hook just like we do when we were adding a color and I'm going to go ahead and chain one right there and chain one again now this time if you don't want to weave in this end you can carry this tail along the row with you and crochet over it, which is what I'm going to do. Okay, so let's work right into that same space again, another stitch. Okay, now work your wide half double crochets all across the row. Now, when I get to that very, the last space of the row, which is same spot in between the turning chain and that last stitch, instead of working one, I'm going to work three all into that same stitch. One, two, three. Now this third stitch counts as the first stitch of the row. And now we'll work one half double crochet around the end of each row. So the color changes will help you keep track. So basically this is number two, this is three, I'm working underneath all of those chains, and here's number four. That's what I like to do is keep track of the stitches at the end of each row. So when we have the color changes, that helps us. So here's one, two, three, four. Now here's the very base chain, you know, that we started. So my fourth stitch will count one, two, three, four. But now I'll continue and work two extras because that will help me get around the corner. Just like that. And now I'll reach my hook down and still work in between those posts and kind of wrap up the bottom of that chain and work across the row. Last stitch, we'll work three, one, two, three. Now I'll work three more up the side for the gray section and then go back working one per the end of each row. Okay, now we're back to the very starting corner. And if you'll remember, we chained two when we joined the yarn and then we worked one stitch right into that same spot. So now we'll finish the corner by working one half double crochet into the corner. Then I'm gonna insert my hook underneath those turning chains, kind of splitting the posts apart and slip stitching, then chaining two. And I'm going to turn my work 
And now in between kind of that turning chain and the post that we just made, you're going to work two half double crochets. It's a little bit tight, but work two in there. Okay, now work in between each stitch, just like we did on the blanket, all the way down to the next corner, and I'll show you how it's just a little bit different on the corners on this round. So I'm right here to the very first corner where I worked three half double crochets. So now to get around this corner, you'll work two half double crochets in between those first two stitches, just like that. Work another one. And then two in between the next two stitches. Just like that. Okay, so finish the round and I'll show you how to join the round. Okay, I'm back to the very first corner that we started working around. And remember, we put the two half double crochets in between those first two stitches. So here's the other two. I'll finish the round by working the two half double crochets. And then I'll insert my hook underneath that turning two turning chain, join with a slip stitch, chain two, and turn my work. Okay, so you'll repeat that for two more rounds. Exact, same thing we, that we just did. So when you get to this corner, you would work in between those two sets. That's where you would work your three half double crochets. And then on the next round, you work two in between the two sides of the stitches. So it kind of goes three and then four. And then in the space between the two pairs, you work the three half double crochet again. Okay, but let me go ahead and start showing you how we're going to do the pom-poms. So actually at the very last row, instead of chaining two, you're going to want to chain one and turn when you're very, when you're done. And then you will slip stitch, which is just entering your hook through the stitch, pulling up a loop and continuing to pull through the loop on your hook. We'll do that one slip stitch into each of the next five stitches. So here's three. Now you can actually place your pom-poms as closer together or even further apart. This number five is totally up to you. Okay, so I did five. Now in the sixth one, I liked having five chains in between mine, five stitches in between. So here's number six. Now I will chain three. Now I'll yarn over and I'm going to insert my hook underneath the top loop of the first chain that I made. And I'm gonna yarn over and pull up a loop. Then I'll yarn over again, insert my hook underneath that same chain loop, yarn over and pull up a loop. Let's repeat that two more times. So I've done it three times, and now I'm going to do it four times. Same loop. That's it, I did it four times. Kind of keep it loose. Then I'll yarn over and pull through all the loops that I've just made, just like that. Now I'll reach down to the stitch that's on the row, the one that I worked into at the first, and I will pull the yarn through and work a slip stitch. There you go. You've made this cute little dot on the edge of your border. Let's do that again. So I'm going to slip stitch the next five. Now 
Now in the sixth one, I'll slip stitch, then chain three, I'm going to yarn over and in the vi underneath the top loop of that first chain, I'll insert my hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, and let's repeat that now three times. So we'll be doing it four times total. So there was number two. Here's number three. And here's number four. We are making a half double crochet cluster, if you're wondering about the name. Now, yarn over. I kind of think it helps to pinch maybe right there. Pull through. No. Nope. There we go. Sometimes it can get stuck on itself. Just be patient. Ah. I'm grabbing that loop, actually, of one of the yarns. There we go. Got it through. Then come down here with a slip stitch. Okay, that's all you do. Slip stitch over five and you'll end up with these cute little dots. When you get all the way back over to here, slip stitch and then tie off like I showed you before by pulling a loop out, clipping the yarn and then weaving in that tail. And then you will have a darling darling blanket but I do if you are a beginner start here with a swatch I think that's always so helpful and then you will be prepared to make your own blanket okay so here is this is my daughter Haley's work and she's still a beginner so there was still a couple little um things her tension was an issue as, as she continued on, her tension did become tighter and tighter. So it is hard to um, keep that consistent when you're a beginner, but don't worry about it because after it's done, you can just get your blanket wet, hand wash it, put it in the washing machine, and pin it all straight out. You know, just get straight pins and pin it to a towel and straighten out the corners, stretch it, and put it into a perfect square shape. That is the beauty of working with yarn. You can, you can kind of fix the stitches. So anyway, thank you so much for coming by our website. I hope I tried to give you as many tips as I can in this video, uh, since it's a beginner video, and I really hope that you'll try it, and don't be afraid of making these either, because I think after you make all these half double crochets, you'll be ready to make these little polka dots. So come by our um, Facebook group and show us a picture of your work. We'd love to see. We'd love to see what colors you chose to make your blanket. So it's called the Daisy Farm Crafters Group. That's on Facebook. If you are only on Instagram, then just tag your post with hashtag Daisy Farm Crafts and we will share that up in our stories on Sundays. And it's just fun to see all the different uh, blankets that people are making. So thank you so much for coming by our website and for learning this beginner striped blanket. You have a good day.